y'all. This is Weehee here coming at you from my kitchen table. We're going to look at some cardboard techniques today. So first thing you got to do is gather up all the cardboard you can find in your house. Things like food boxes work great. Uh, Amazon packages, any kind of cardboard you can get your hands on will work just fine. So I have my little pile here and then I'm going to start trying to find some tools that I might need to help me assemble a cardboard sculpture, which is this week's project. So uh, I found some regular glue. I have a hot glue gun. I know not everybody has a hot glue gun, but they only cost like $3 at Walmart. So if you can get there and you can purchase one, that, that might be a good investment to have because it's really handy for a lot of things. Also, box cutters are really helpful. They also only cost a couple bucks at Walmart, um, but not necessary. You can definitely do everything with the scissors. And if you don't have a scissors, look at this you can rip cardboard too. Okay, so don't get hung up on thinking that you don't have the right materials to do this because an artist is an experimenter and a risk taker and they can figure out a way to make stuff happen. You don't have to follow my directions exactly. These are just suggestions. Okay, now another thing that you can use is uh, tape. Although I would recommend a um, little like scotch tape probably isn't gonna be strong enough to hold cardboard. Things like masking tape or clear packing tape would be better. All right now, if you have none of those things, I'm going to show you a few ways to connect cardboard that require no adhesives or glue at all. All right, so first let's just talk about um, thinking three dimensionally. All right, you have these pieces of cardboard that are flat planes. A plane is just a flat surface, and you want to make something three dimensional, so you put them together. Now, if I just put a bead of hot glue along the edge of this, there's not very much surface area to connect the two parts together, but it can usually work with hot glue. It doesn't always work with other glues that you might have at hand. Now notice how I'm holding this for a really long time. If you don't let the hot glue dry completely, it's gonna come apart really easily. But there, I let it dry and it's nice and sturdy. The other thing you could do is maybe with tape, you can put tape along the seam to create your hold for your sculpture. But consider the fact that tape is a different color. It has a different texture. It has a totally different look. So if you're gonna use tape, it's not invisible. Even clear tape is not invisible. And so you wanna to try to apply that in a really uniform way that looks like you meant to do it that way. Like here, I put it across the entire scene. It probably wouldn't look as good if I just tore a piece like this and just like taped it on, right? That's not gonna look quite as visually appealing. So think about that. This tape is now a line that creates a visual element. Okay, um, the next thing that I wanna show you is that cardboard is actually, even though we think of it as rigid, it can be very moldable. So if you kind of like break up the rigidity of the cardboard just by like kneading it, imagine you're, you're working with a dough or a piece of clay. I can break this up and I can actually sculpt this thing to be more rounded. Check it out. And if you wanted to, you can also do this thing called darting. I borrowed this technique from sewing. Okay, if you create a dart, a dart is just like a little triangle like that. And then I can put those two seams together and maybe with a bit of tape or a bit of glue, I can connect that dart or hey, we could even sew it with thread since we're borrowing this from fabric. And I can start to create a shape using the darts. Okay, one thing that I didn't mention yet that I could also be using my box cutter knife. If you are using a box cutter, make sure that you put down a protective surface. I have this nice cutting pad, but if you don't have one of those, just use another piece of cardboard or your parents are probably gonna be pretty upset if you cut up your kitchen table. So make sure you have a cutting surface underneath you um, so you're not destroying your furniture. All right, so that's molding and darting. Okay, another way, if you're trying to bend the cardboard so it's not a flat plane, check it out. When I try to bend this cardboard, if I wanted this to be rounded, it just kind of like bends right on the lines, right? And it makes a weird shape, okay? but if I take my cardboard and I can use either my box cutter or I can open up my pair of scissors like this 
then I can do this thing that I call scoring. And scoring is when you just cut through one layer of the cardboard. So I'm not pushing all the way through. I can use the scissors to do that as well. And I'm just making these little lines next to each other. And I did that across the whole surface. And then I can bend this and I can make any shape that I want that's curved because I've scored that outside edge, okay? So if you need a curved shape, try scoring the cardboard first. All right, now if you are trying to make something three-dimensional, and we talked about how you could use flat planes and, and tape or glue those together, another way to do it is by stacking. So here you can see I started off with one shape, and I'm going to build up that shape so it has a three-dimensional form. So what I did was I just cut out a whole bunch of those shapes, but you can see each one gets a little bit smaller as I go. And the way that I did that to make it easy on myself is I just take one shape and I'm going to trace it. It doesn't even have to be pretty because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut on the inside of that line. So I'm just gonna make it slightly smaller than the last shape that I just made. So I can, line. And then I can stack it up like so. Now when you stack layers, this would be fine for you to use just your regular old Elmer's glue. That'll work. It will take a long time to dry. So once you apply the Elmer's glue, you're gonna have to just like walk away and let that sit. Okay, but that will eventually dry and stick. Other than that, hot glue, would help you work a lot faster. And remember that hot glue is hot, so don't burn yourself. Okay, so that's stacking the layers. And you can see it takes a long time to build up those layers to actually get some dimension. So here's a little shortcut. You don't have to make quite as many layers if you make what I call platforms, right? So all I did was take a little strip of cardboard and I'm just gonna roll it up like that. I'm going to put a dot of hot glue to hold that together. And then I'll put a dot of hot glue on my cardboard. Put my little platforms on there. And then I can add the next layer. So you can see that gives it a different look from the side but it also can help build something out three-dimensionally uh, much faster than if you were cutting every single layer. Little trick. Remember those paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls you've been saving? Well, think about how we talked about surface area. There's almost no surface area to this edge. Even with hot glue, it would be difficult to glue this piece onto this piece. So all you have to do is go like this where you're taking your scissors and just cutting a tiny little slit all the way around. And you're gonna bend these little flaps up like this. And it's important that you make that little cut all the same length. Okay, and now you have a bottom that has a lot more surface area that you could use any glue that you have, or you could even use tape and that will help it connect much better to whatever you're trying to connect it to. All right, now let's say that you do not have any glue or any tape. What are you going to do? Okay, well, if you're looking at that, and even if you do have glue and tape, this can be a way to make your structures more sturdy. We talked about how that's not very much surface area to connect your glue, Okay, right, So what if you took this shape and instead of just making it flat where it would connect, you create a little tab like I have here. So I just, when I drew out the shape, I just added that extra little square, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm, if I want it to attach right here, I'm just gonna mark where that little, or how long that little tab is. Then I'm gonna take my box cutter knife or you can just like stab your scissors through there and you're gonna cut a little slit that's the width of the thickness of your cardboard. 
and then you're just going to stick that in there like a key right and there you can see i don't need any glue or any tape and i have a nice sturdy connection it helps even if you make that hole a little bit too small and then you like really have to shove it in to get it in there but it won't come out yeah okay. i've created this little three-dimensional sculpture no glue i mean it's not really a sculpture it's just a part of a sculpture but all I did with this one is I created what's called a slot joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut halfway through this one and then halfway through the top. I have a very dull knife. It might be easier just to use the scissors if your knife is dull. Halfway down this way and then I'm just going to slide those two slots together. And if your cardboard's really thick, you might have to cut like two parts to that, like going like this. Cut another little skinny little line to make room for that cardboard to come in there. Oops. Yeah. And then those two pieces will stay together. All right, so those are kind of some simple ways of creating attachments and creating three-dimensional parts to your sculpture. One thing you might want to do as well is create some contrast because you have all of these like smooth brown surfaces from your cardboard. But have you ever peeled away the top layer of the paper to reveal the corrugation of the cardboard? Some cardboards are more easy to do this than others. If you have a cardboard that's used like some super strong glue, it might be really hard to peel that paper away. And so I would just suggest finding a different piece of cardboard rather than like picking away at the paper for hours. Because like I said, some are really easy to peel off and some are um, a little bit more difficult. But once you have that paper removed, you could use this piece of cardboard just like you would use any other piece of cardboard in your sculpture, but it's gonna provide a little bit more contrast. So try adding some bits where you've peeled the paper away. All right, so those are my tips for creating things with cardboard. Remember, a lot of this is trial and error, willingness to experiment, using your own intuition, and trying to figure out the best way to build the thing that you're envisioning in your mind. And you'll find it if you give yourself the time and the space to do that. So uh, good luck with your project this week, and email me or Miss Rad if you have any questions.